So for all of those that had joined on the previous conversation, I'm going to restart in just a few minutes. And so this is uh, part two of aligning our soul, mind, and body, releasing the blockages that inhibit us from having the love we desire. And specifically, we're paying attention to and focusing today on releasing negative self-talk. And so I'm going to continue to give a little bit of information as we repopulate. There was about 40 people on the previous uh, live stream. And I recommend for anybody that did not see the first one that is watching this one for the first time, to go to my Facebook page and you will be able to see uh, the first one on my Facebook page. Because this one won't make as much sense until you have the first one under your seat. So, aloha, uh, everybody for joining in. Welcome, Sherry. Welcome, uh, C. Welcome, Anne. Welcome, Richard. Welcome, Sherry Dowell. Welcome, Sarah. And welcome, Carol. <coughs> so, thank you all for returning. For some of you, you just got the notice that I am live now, or you just tuned in, one of the two. Welcome, Johnny. Um, and so, this is actually part two. Today's subject is releasing negative self-talk and its associations with love. And we're using the power of forgiveness to help resolve this blockage. And on the first section, which I'm going to highlight now as we continue to, to regain everybody <laughs> after the first one cut off, it was a very odd thing. My phone did something I've never seen my phone do before. I'm very curious about that. In any case, what we were speaking of, uh, if I can encapsulate it all shortly before I move forward, is that one of the reasons we have negative self-talk is because of our separation from source. It starts at birth. We all made an agreement earlier, for those that raised their hand, that we do believe in an unconditional divine, that God loves us unconditionally. And yet, from the moment of birth, we go, come into a world that is filled with conditional love starting with our parents, then our peers, our teachers. Everything about love is taught us to be conditional, and therefore we bring conditional love to everyone else, including ourself. Why didn't you do that? You, if you had done this, then you would have received this, this, and that. I can't believe you made that choice, you stupid person, you. All of these unpleasant self-talks. And what this does is it obviously creates more spiritual debt. It obviously is not helping us. And we were about to go into some solutions for this. So I'm going to wait for the, the other students to still come in. We want to get up to probably right now about 21. I want to get up to about 35 before I go into part two of the solutions. <clears throat> so I'll, I'll converse a little bit more. I also talked a little bit about a connectivity, for example, to my Soulmate Attraction System program. And what I pointed out was um, that so many of us go through life with a significant other or trying to find a significant other that will fulfill the hole in our heart, that will help us to, to stop the pain because it's painful to not have love. And yet we always search outside of us. We put the onus on that other person to fulfill that love. And I used uh, myself as an example, you know, they're the soul of my, my, my spouse, you're required to, to fulfill my love, and, um, and I sign up to fulfill yours, right? Now, that's really what we do. You're required to fulfill my love. You're not doing a good job. Do better. I don't feel fulfilled. What's wrong with you? <laughs> it's, it's, everything about it just sounds backwards. Everything about it doesn't sound right. And yet that's how we bring ourselves into relationships with the expectation and putting the onus on others to fulfill our love. The key and the solution is to fulfill it before we ever enter into a relationship. And if you're already in one, then work on fulfilling it in other places that are not associated with your relationship. Then, when you come to the relationship, you have lots of love to offer. When we offer love, in many, many, many cases, we have an expectation of return. This is why many souls, they go into relationships, they give all their love, they feel very drained, the spouse leaves. 
they're drained. They don't even want to take on another relationship because it's too dang painful to consider. They gave it all last time and it didn't work out. I can't figure out what happened. Where did I go wrong? Where did you go wrong? You are taught incorrectly from the beginning. You are taught conditional love. You are taught that you needed to give love to receive it. Uh, that, that when you give love, you have an expectation of return. These are all false teachings. Love should only be given unconditionally. No expectation of return. It's the expectation of return that creates a great deal of suffering. And that is a, is a mindset that has been brought into many relationships. When we look at self, lack of self-love, this comes from places where we have been taught that love is conditional. And no matter what you have done to try to receive attention, to try to receive validation, to try to get the spouse's attention or more of the spouse's love, no matter what you've done, it has been insufficient. And so we, we grab on to any of that negative self-chatter that we may have adopted as truth through the various uh, parents, teachers, peers that have taught us through the course of our life. So now we're going to move on to the solution. How do we resolve this in the healthiest and highest way? We resolve it using soul power. Power of soul can transform anything because we're dealing with things at the level of creation. We're dealing with things at the level of origination. The reason we have these conditions we spoke about is because it's a blockage at the level of soul. So we deal with that first. We say, dear the soul, of all of the negative thoughts that I have ever had, do thoughts have a soul? The answer is yes. Why? Because everything is under the realm of the Creator, including thoughts. And thoughts come to us because of our spiritual debt. They come to us in the form of a, of a darkness, if you will. And they bring to us this negative thought. They have a soul. But every soul's purpose is the same. It doesn't matter if it's a positive thought or a negative thought. Every soul has a purpose, and every soul's purpose is the same, which is to serve. The purpose of a negative thought is to serve us. We get stuck, however, in it because of the ego, because of our personality, because of where we're stuck at at that moment in time. If, however, we can remember this most important truth, that this negative thought, this negative mindset, this negative belief, this conditional love that is showing up, it has a message for me. If we can just acknowledge that, we can then transform it. We can then release it from its service because its service needs to be completed. Its service needs to be acknowledged. It has come to remind us that we may have created the spiritual debt upon others. It has come to remind us that it is no longer serving us. It's going to keep coming until we get it. It's going to keep coming until we acknowledge it and love it. Why do we love it? Because love melts all blockages. Forgiveness brings inner peace and inner joy. Love melts all blockages. Forgiveness brings inner peace and inner joy. How many of us wallow in self-deprecation, unpleasant self-thoughts? We're beating ourselves up. Imagine forgiveness, peace, and joy. No more tormenting. This can happen when we see everything with a little bit bigger set of eyes, when we pay attention to the bigger picture. Catch that negative self-thought. Step number one. Your goal, my mission for you, my task that I ask you at the soul level to accomplish is to start identifying a negative thought when it appears. You might be surprised if you pay attention that they're coming up very often. Sometimes in the back of our head, sometimes when we're doing dishes, sometimes when we're making sandwiches for the kids, sometimes is when we're at work and the coworker is saying something and we have this negative thought about the coworker. Catch the negativity in its tracks. Specifically, catch the negative self-talk. Okay? Once you catch it, realize that it is a soul and that it has a beautiful purpose to serve you. So we want to give every soul love. If you kick an angry dog, do you think he's going to be happy about that? 
if you send love, I'm not saying go pet the angry dog, but if you send love, you sing beautiful words to the angry dog. There's a really good chance it will calm down. There's a really good chance your frequency will transform the frequency of that angry dog. It's the same thing with a negative thought. It is a soul. Its only purpose is to serve. We want to give it love. We want to give it the opportunity to complete its task that it, is, that it has. Its task is to remind us that we have created a spiritual debt in the course of time, that we could have created conditions where other people had negative self-talk because of things that we did. We now can see its service to us. Dear the soul of this negative self-talk, I love you. Thank you for your unconditional service to me. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to see that uh, my parents, my peers, my teachers are not bad people. That they didn't mean to give me these negative messages. That they were repeating something that they had learned and that maybe I had been this way to them first. Please forgive me, my parents, my peers, my teachers. Please forgive me all of the uh, times my own soul, dear my own soul, please forgive me for all the times that I had spoken negatively about myself. I love myself. I honor myself. I will be more conscious and say more positive things to myself when I catch these coming up. So I think at this point you have a good understanding of that. Let us do an actual practice together. Since the live stream is reset, uh, I have time to go over. Since the first half hour completed, <laughs> we'll work with another one here, okay? So let's do a practice. Now, if you happen to have a book by Master Shah, I recommend you grab it. If you don't, that's okay. I'll be using the power in these books. Now, I'm going to use one of his most recent books called Soul Over Matter to help bring uh, alignment to our soul, to release some of the mind, uh, mindsets and beliefs from our soul. We're going to work with uh, Da Kuan Shu, which is the greatest forgiveness calligraphy. It has extraordinary power transmitted into it, and it will help to align our soul and release the self-love blockages. So please, where you're at, sit up straight, put your feet flat on the floor, relax your palms over your lower abdomen, close your eyes. I'd like you to really come into a space with this so that you can really have a depthful forgiveness. You can really forgive yourself. You release the old blockages. So repeat after me if it is comfortable. Dear my own soul, I love you, honor you, and appreciate you. Please forgive me for not paying attention to you and all of your messages my whole life. Please forgive me for all the times I have spoken negatively towards myself all the times I have accepted other people's beliefs about me as true, even though they were negative. Please forgive me for all the times I have searched outside of myself for validation and approval to fulfill the love that you, my soul, and my Creator already has for me. Please forgive me for blaming others for my conditions, for blaming others for how my personality has formed to be the way it is. Please forgive me, my beloved soul, for any times I have criticized my own thoughts, words, or actions. Please teach me, my beloved soul, how to love myself unconditionally. Please show me opportunities.
opportunities to give love to myself instead of say negative things to myself. Please give me opportunities to identify any negative mindsets, attitudes, or beliefs that come up so that they don't continue to hold sway over my heart. Bless me in those moments to awaken, to forgive those negative thoughts, to forgive all the souls that brought them to me, and to ask for forgiveness for all the lifetimes I might have caused others to have similar unpleasant thoughts. Dear my beloved Creator, the divine, whatever you want to call it. I love you from the bottom of my heart. Please bless me to realign my soul, mind, and body to your unconditional love. Please show me every day all the different ways you love me unconditionally. Please Remind me of your unconditional love in nature and in every possible thing that you can remind me in. Please bless me, my beloved Creator, to be grateful instead of complaining, to be conscious instead of unconscious. Please bless me, my beloved Creator, to receive your unconditional love in my thoughts, words, and actions. Help me to fulfill my heart fully so that I do not require those outside of me to do so. I am so very, very grateful. And we ask the Da Quan Chu greatest forgiveness blessings to subdivide from this special calligraphy to all of the souls watching to bless them to release these blockages as appropriate to align their soul heart mind and body to the unconditional love of their beloved Creator so as I chant visualize the greatest love coming to you from the divine releasing any of the negativity in your heart center, in your mind, wherever it's at, just seeing it releasing and being replaced with the Divine's love. Da Quan Shu Da Quan Shu Da Quan Shu Da Quan Shu I forgive you, I forgive me. Bring love, peace, harmony. Bring love, peace, harmony. I forgive you, please forgive me. Bring love, peace, harmony. Bring love, peace, harmony. I forgive you. I forgive me. Bring love, peace, harmony. Bring love, peace, harmony. Da Quan Shu, greatest forgiveness. 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 And I want you to visualize the Divine's light 
shining on you so brightly that there's literally no negative thoughts can remain. They are flying away from you so rapidly they simply cannot stand the love. They cannot be around the light. You are glowing the greatest divine's unconditional love. You are and have always been the divine's unconditional love. You are the divine's child. Every one of the divine's children are pure in their highest original state. Your purity is never left. It is being cleaned so that you can see it with more clarity. Da Quan Chu, greatest forgiveness. 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 Continue to repeat while seeing this incredible light coming to you. Dear the soul of my parents, my brothers and sisters, my children, my grandparents, to the soul of my friends and my enemies, dear the soul of myself, I love you. I wish to offer you my unconditional forgiveness. Please forgive me for blaming you, as I now see I might have harmed you first. Please forgive me for judging you as I see I might have judged you too much. Please forgive me for accepting your information as true when I should have recognized God's unconditional love. I offer you my unconditional forgiveness. For any times you have taught me false teaching or teaching about conditional love, I release each and every one of you unconditionally and I ask that you release me unconditionally of any harm that I may have brought you in any time, especially if I have taught you conditional love. Dear the soul of all of my peers, religious beliefs, all of those that are not immediate family, that have taught me conditional love, I love you. Please forgive me if in any time I had brought to you conditional love, conditional love teachings, if I have harmed you because of wrong teachings, I deeply, sincerely apologize. I wish to offer you my unconditional forgiveness if you have brought any conditional love teachings to me. I release you fully and completely of any spiritual debt that you have to me. And I encourage you to release me of any spiritual debt I have to you. Da Quan Shu, greatest forgiveness. Da Quan Shu, greatest forgiveness. I forgive you. You forgive me, bring love, peace, harmony, bring love, peace, harmony. Dear my own soul, dear my younger self, my child, I love you. 
please forgive me. Please forgive me, my beloved self, my child self, my teenage self. Please forgive me for accepting that love is conditional. Please forgive me for listening and accepting other people's judgments, criticisms, other people's perspectives and beliefs that did not serve me. Please forgive me for holding on this long before I awakened to release these false teachings. Please open your heart and soul, my beloved younger self, my beloved teenage self, to the Divine's unconditional love. Please release all forms of self-criticism, self-denial, self lack of self-love. Please allow our beloved Divine's unconditional love into our life now and forevermore. Da Quan Shu, greatest forgiveness. 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 Thank you, Divine. Thank you, my beloved Creator. Inside your heart center, bow your head nine times with the greatest gratitude to all of the souls that have offered you their forgiveness to your own inner self for the love and the light that it is now accepting. And please gently return and share what this experience was like for you. How did it touch your heart? Were you awakened to things that you did not understand before and now have a greater understanding? Please share. And for those that uh, joined within the last 20 or so minutes. Uh, this is actually part two. The first part was cut off at about the 30 minute mark and I had to restart. So if you are coming in and last uh, 15 or 20 minutes, not because you were cut off from the previous one, but you are new, then I highly encourage you to watch the first one as it lays a very strong foundation for this latter half. So as you can see, a lot of this self-talk is adopted and accepted false information. And it may have served us at that point in time, but it is no longer serving us. So we observe it, <coughs> we give it love. We ask it to please transform to light because it has completed its service. We use that opportunity to love ourselves, to ask for forgiveness of all the others that we have been holding the wrong way this whole time. We use this wisdom to fill our heart uh, from, the, from the right places, from the Divine's love. Because when two people who have filled their hearts with the Divine's love meet, that is the highest twin flame possible. That is the highest love possible because there is those people that filled their hearts from the divine's love, they have unconditional love to give. They have no expectations. They will give with no expectations. And, and, and everything will be so much easier. There will be no need for judgment or blame or criticism or any of that because there is just a fulfilling of the divine's love. So it goes very deep when you look at the different ways we can harm ourselves from this false information. And so Zilke says, great and happy smile. Sherry Dowell says, thank you. Don says, thank you, Master Paul. You're very welcome, Don. 
and C responds, that was the most profound teachings yet. Greatest appreciation. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Lighter, loving, and happier. Beautiful sharing. Thank you, C. And all those, if you have friends that have these kinds of blockages, make sure you share the URLs with them. <laughs> there's two URLs, so tell them to go watch them both because there's two parts. <laughs> and then Karen says, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Kristen Strachan says, my teenage self certainly stood up and waved her arms. <laughs> I can see she has some work to do there. Yeah, yeah. We often adopt this information. We develop our personalities, our egos, very often based on this false information. Janet says, I saw black arrows releasing from her heart and mind. Images of other people were coming up. I love all the information tonight, vibrating all over, end to end. Ah, that's fabulous. Thank you so much for your sharing, Janet. And then C says, she's so grateful for the teachings and practice. I'm so happy it touched your heart, C, truly. Uh, Dana Knapp, dog on in, Master Paul. Lots of love and hugs. Feel relieved and grateful, says CJ. Johannes, I had a past life experience. I was around 9 to 12 years old where I was treating myself and my parents uh, with blame. And now I had a great release from that. Beautiful observation, Johannes. And Esther says she had pain in her chest all over her upper body and now she feels okay. It was a huge release, a message center blockage, we call it, released, associated with self-love blockages. Sarah says the most amazing releasing of resentments ever from her child being. Wow, that's huge, Sarah. Maybe you want to do multiple sessions with, with that and um, you know just work on deeper levels. Be sure you have one of Master Shah's calligraphies with you, though, for everybody, because it carries the divine's, uh, the divine's forgiveness. And our forgiveness gets swallowed in our own egos and stuff. When we bring the divine's forgiveness, it starts to erase on a much bigger level. So do your best to grab one of Master Shah's books with the calligraphies, either the Soul Healing Miracles or the newest one, which is called Soul Over Matter. And very shortly, within uh, probably a month or so, we should have a new book from Master Shah, and it will be Da I, The Greatest Love. That calligraphy in there will be very powerful. So Sarah says, uh, um, Monica says, Dear Master Paul, your blessings, creators, ones, and more took me to a very deep place in high school where she was really feeling lonely and was able to, with this practice, to visualize herself um, and said with creator's love and coming within able to shift her perspective and feel more complete without expecting people's company or expecting recognition or love from them very good awareness and Christina Barker it's helped shift so much fear that she was feeling thank you so much feeling the strength of the oneness in the creation thank you thank you thank you love you love you love you <clears throat> so it sounds like it was a very beneficial uh, service today to all of you I wish to offer you the possibility if you are interested in receiving a crown chakra blessing for releasing self-love issues crown chakra blessing for releasing self-love issues okay and so if you're interested in that you can contact me uh, through the Facebook Messenger. The honor fee is only 100. And uh, I can tell you that it will, the benefits could, could be significant. Because what happens is these things are in layers. The, I've had uh, some of my students receive one, two, and sometimes three of them. Uh, but they have great result and then greater result and then you don't even recognize them they have shifted so much after a few of these because these self-love blockages they have very deep roots they go back sometimes multiple lifetimes and the divine knows the source you know i just just do the service the special service 
but heaven knows what the blockages are. They know exactly where they are. And when those get uprooted, the, the degree and the amount of this negative self-talk, the degree and the amount of the lack of self-love, <clears throat> it's also for those that are having difficulty finding their true love. There's sometimes, not always, but sometimes there's some very deep roots with that too. And so sometimes receiving like a crown chakra blessing to, uh, to release the blockages for uh, self-love can, can truly impact us tremendously. So I encourage you to take advantage of that if that resonates with you. You can contact me through the Facebook Messenger or through my website, either case. So we're going to say thank you, thank you, thank you to all beings of love and light that showed up today. Uh, to all those that did not, we know you're serving elsewhere. To the Divine Tao, the Source, we thank you to my spiritual teacher, Master Shah, and I thank all of you. Love you, love you, love you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We'll see you tomorrow when we work with forgiveness and relationships. Bye-bye, everybody. See you then. Bye-bye.